Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, long time no see. Um, uh, it has been a while since I uploaded uh, anything onto my channel, in fact uh, the last one was my match against uh, Chess Explained, where I got uh, beaten fair and square. And actually I would like to talk a little bit about that match because um, there were a couple of games, in fact pretty much every single one of them, but two in particular there where stuff went down uh, that I think uh, it's probably well worth, well worth showing because it has got some educational value. As a side note, I would like to mention that you can see now my microphone sticking into the picture without my uh, protein shaker attached to it. Um, as you can see, and as I mentioned before, I'm slowly developing and improving uh, my gear as I'm working towards the group coaching videos that um, I'm going to release very soon. So yeah there is a lot happening behind the scenes while i'm not really uploading much so i thought that i would give you a bit of a summary or rather just a brief analysis of a couple of games that should have could have gone probably in a different way um the first one that i would like to show you was um probably game one actually which was this marvelty bind structure which followed theory for a long long time and i was quite happy with how the game progressed and I thought that we were actually playing a high quality game um, and the position got here where things started to go funny I played here queen h3 because I really didn't like the idea of allowing d5 so easily and the idea behind queen h3 is that it pins the e6 pawn so now after d5 ed he can't retake because uh, queen takes d7 wins a piece uh, because uh, there is a lot of stuff hanging back at home so that's why I did it but the computer doesn't like it and in fact it recommends rook d1 with the idea of swapping this pawn for this one and once again my pieces are a little bit more active than his and consequently the position is a touch better for white but nothing more than that by any stretch of the imagination now after queen h3 knight c5 and f5 things got very sharp very quickly which was my intention by the way and in general I my very brief and very silly plan for the match was to try to outsmart my opponent by tactical means which is the field where I thought that I would prove superior wasn't the case at all predominantly because I failed to spot very very basic tactics throughout the match but that's not to take credit away from uh, Christoph as I said he beat me fair and square and uh, credit to him he played uh, solid chess throughout so yeah, as I said, the most important lesson that I learned from this whole business was that um, one shouldn't go completely unprepared into a, a dual commentary match like this that is going to be watched by potentially thousands um, because he has got a far larger audience than I do, so it was actually thousands. Anyway, after f5, d5, this is where things got very dicey. In fact, d5 is a blunder. I thought it was a blunder and I miserably failed exploiting it even though the ways to exploit it at least one of them is actually super basic and that is a case in point of how bad of a state in mind i was in this match i simply missed rook d1 here which essentially wins the game for me because i'm winning the d5 pawn exposing the king uh the b7 pawn is becoming a bit touchy and uh, in general it's just a, a very clear-cut win but what is really stunning here and of course the point the computer very very cold-heartedly points out these things to you in a split second is that there is an even more convincing and more beautiful win here to be had with bishop e3 needless to say that i didn't even look at this move which again is pure tactics exploiting the fact that the queen is attacking the rook my idea of putting the queen on h3 whilst it was a positional idea it was based on lots of tactical tricks and i didn't see that beyond the d7 knight the rook could be um, a sort of a target of tactical tricks as well but here it is uh, bishop e3 is beautiful and by the way the reason why bishop e3 is probably better than rook d1 is because rook d1 offers them to bail out with this queen sack after which it is still um, a fair bit of labor to actually crack this position up the idea behind bishop e3 once again is to force the queen away rook e3 is out of the question because queen takes c8 wins and funnily enough after bishop e3 the queen finds it very difficult to find a meaningful square for herself. Um, after queen here, we have got bishop takes king here and bishop f7, hitting the rook and the pawn, and that's game over. But I think the computer even told me that uh, um, bishop c5 was a win. 
No, that's on this position. Yeah, uh, that was actually after queen e5. Sorry, I stand corrected. So yeah, against queen c3, simply take the pawn, go bishop f7, hit here and here. That's it, game is done and dusted. And if they uh, go queen e5, then the surprising bishop takes c5 is the winning move because after queen e1, rook e1, bishop e1, bishop g1 blocks, once again, the rook is hanging on c8. So black doesn't have bishop d4. Um or uh, any other move for that matter because of the check is on and if the rook goes to f8 trying to build up further pressure then uh, there is another beautiful move here queen h4 hitting the rook and covering bishop d4 and next time going to take on d5 or simply retreat the bishop if they come here simply bishop e2 followed by bishop f3 and white is just winning easily so once again the key to success would have been this stunningly beautiful bishop e3 move which uses the fact that the look is, rook is overloaded so it can't come this way because it has to defend that way and now just um, it's a carnage because uh, black can't hold this position together it would have been really lovely it wasn't particularly difficult i at least should have noticed rook d1 because yeah it was such a basic tactics but yeah wasn't my day didn't see it played lemon queen f3 and uh went down like i should after that rather easily now the other game that i thought was well worth discussing and uh it is uh one heck of a motive although once again there were mutual mistakes here before the actual position arose, was this uh, crazy queen sack that I entirely missed once again. Another very clear sign that uh, I was not really in the mood or right state of mind for this match. He just took on h5 here and really such an obvious concept and uh, I really did enjoy him doing it even when I was playing the game because it just struck me as something that I would have considered strikingly obvious uh, immediately. And of course it's quite complex and uh, actually not sound because after knight of six check here here i can actually walk away into safety and uh, at one point in the game which i forgot to memorize so i will have to rely on my chess common sense here i could have done something remarkably beautiful but bear with me i totally underestimated the strength of this check and the ideas around it. So I just went gung ho and took on b3. But in fact, it was right here and now the position where I should have uh, separated the pawns. Oh, I need to go analysis board, sorry. Uh, by playing e5. So that now f5 is met by king g5. And if takes here, knight takes, and the knight gets trapped as a result of my queen still being at home instead of being on b3. And this should be a winning position to me because if uh, white doesn't do it, then I can separate these two pawns, which means that f5 check is never going to hurt me. Should be a okay. Instead, I went, as I said, crazy. And I went in there. And I think this was the moment, actually, now that I'm looking at it. But I may be wrong. But I could have simply come back here. I mean, no other mind then a computer would come up with such a concept. It's so ridiculously mind-boggling. And the idea behind this whole thing is that you want to actually hide your king back in the corner. And now after the knight jumps to any discovered checks, I have bishop g7, with the exception of knight h5. So it was not this position. I wonder when it could have been done. But that was the motive that the computer at one point suggested to walk back home and um, be happy. And it's an amazing motif. Uh, maybe it's further down the track. I will have to... Maybe here? Let's see how it's different. So if I walk back now, check, 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 check. Oh yeah, I can just play e5 now. That's it. Maybe I could have done it in the previous case too. And um, once again, case closed because my king is perfectly safe. e4 is hanging. It's over. And I missed this one too. But... To be perfectly fair, the reason why I showed you this position was not because I wanted to show you what stuff I have missed, but look at this. After rook f3, queen c4, king h3, at this point I was still in the mindset that it's a bluff and I'm totally winning. Totally not the case. And after rook b6, I'm actually lost. 
like here I'm done and dusted and he actually played the correct move f5 check but after take take king g5 rook check king here there was only one move to be made and that would have been very very embarrassed a beautiful checkmate motif he actually opted for the perpetual check here instead he could have done bishop c3 <laughs> a lovely quiet move but once again he's following my lessons checks captures and threats that's a threat my friends checkmate there and good luck me for if I want to try to stop it because um, how on earth am I gonna go about that I can't I can't block the check on any of these squares done dusted so he actually could have finished me off here and he was rather reluctant to believe that there was no mate here and I felt like oh this is looking very iffy uh, whenever your opponent has a, a perpetual check already booked and they can still go for whatever they want it's like oh my lord that's not what I want luckily he was very short of time uh, by this stage so he eventually opted for the perpetual but you can see that this bishop c3 would have been an epic nail in my coffin and uh, there were some other tactical blunders throughout the match that could have changed the course of the game. But overall, uh, I think that we had a very fair result and one that reflected uh, perfectly well on the uh, form and shape in which the players were on that particular day. And once again, I would like to express my gratitude to Jess Explained for... Uh, uh, playing with me that match. I think that uh, it entertained the crowds rather well and uh, It earned me some extra attention on my channel as well So thank you very much guys if you subscribe in the meantime or if you have been following me for a long time uh, I will be back with more very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye